Welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, this is Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, today I would like to talk about spiritual values. So, basically, what in the old days, back in the day, like for example, places like India, when the whole idea of creating an ashram was that creating a situation for the disciples, the seekers of the truth, to come and sit with their spiritual teacher, spiritual master. And the idea of creating the ashram was to, for the wealthy to chip in and to donate money uh, to create a platform for the less fortunate, those who weren't uh, financially secure, be able to be in an ashram to sit around the master and without really worrying about how to make a living, uh, to be able to meditate and receive uh, spiritual wisdom from their master, from their guru, their teacher, to be able to work on themselves. So that is really mainly the idea of having, uh, creating ashrams or spiritual platforms for uh, seekers of the truth to come together and be able to do the work. So, uh, Shishi, I don't know what's going on, but I don't think if everybody's muted. I just muted everyone. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Sorry about that. The, <laughs> um, but what slowly, slowly has changed as the world is changing and the world is really revolving around a one pointedness and that money and uh, possessions and the worldly uh, accomplishments have become the center point of human psyche. And, and we are being valued or we look, we're being looked at on our financial strength and our wealth of where we're at financially. And if you're financially uh, are not sufficient or you're not in a position in society that um, it's worthy, people look at you as they don't pay attention to your spiritual understanding or your level of consciousness or where you're at. They look at you, what kind of car you drive, how you dress, uh, what kind of school you send your children through, to you know what kind of home you possess, and things of that nature. So, in today's society, and you can also see it in our movies or in our uh, TV and advertisement industry, you can very clearly see it, especially when you enter into the mainstream world. And you can see that mostly the topic and conversation is always about investments, um, where I can, you know, what sort of stocks I can buy or Bitcoin or uh, where I can buy real estate that I'm going to be profiting or what kind of business is profitable. It's basically all about money. Uh, very little in the mainstream world or next to none, uh, you hear anything about consciousness development. Unless you go into the spiritual world, you go to the ashrams or yoga centers or you get into the workshops or you enter into um, 
go to some expos or any kind of gatherings, uh, conscious centers that you come together, or you live in places like Sedona or Manchester or spiritual centers around the world, uh, which you hear the conversations is about human consciousness development, unless you're in that kind of environment, in the mainstream world, you don't hear anything about that. And um, God, spirit, the creator, the force of life uh, has, it's become non-existing and money or the dollar sign has taken over. And that is the most important thing that exists and nothing else matters. So this is very sad of what is happening uh, in the world right now. And especially with the, the leaders that, especially in the United States, the, the, that they've chosen, they re-emphasize this fact, this, and they're more focused on separation, creating separation in the world. There is them and us. Um, the only thing that they relate to spirituality is I, religion. And religion we have seen uh, in our lives that unfortunately in some ways has lost its values because it's heavily emphasized on fear and punishment and that kind of things and dogma and do's and don't do's uh, or recruiting soldiers uh, most most uh, religious groups they are recruiting people to pull into their own uh, organization and ultimately be able to brainwash you and so you can go out there and fight for their belief system in the name of God but very little of the effort is really into spiritual understanding and opening up our hearts and to develop uh, the love for one another and to really go into this place of accepting and forgiveness and, and learning systematically, uh, getting educated in order to raise our vibrations to a higher consciousness. So this whole system that we're looking at has really become crooked and twisted and misrepresented. And it's very, very unfortunate. So <laughs> for those of us who are being pulled uh, on, on the spiritual path and the spirit, the the force the the life force god um whatever name you would want to put into it but whatever name that you really feel resonate resonate with is that those of us who's been called upon the path of the spirit who's been called and been touched by that naturally feel very different, naturally are being casted and, and being looked at as the weirdos, that we're weird people, we're different, are um, the fact that you are pulled in the way you are is being ridiculed. Uh, a lot of us coming from families that if you don't go, if you're not uh, being religious and you're being spiritual, 
it's a woo woo and it's weird so naturally it it creates a situation that you really feel that you are all alone by yourself and and uh, nobody really understands you and nobody really knows uh, what is going on inside you. Fortunately, through the grace of God, Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul or the grace of existence, the presence, um, and also the development of the internet and availability of more information today is we're able to find each other and we're able to find our niche and our community of our brothers, sisters who all been called on the world of spirit and, and we have similar interest. But in the same time, as being on this path of uh, going towards the light, there's also, it could be extremely confusing at times uh, because just like anything else in the world, when something becomes popular and more and more being drawn to it, there is also misrepresentation that happens and there's the charlatans and there's the fake guru or you know there's always this business mind that comes in and finds an angle that in the name of the spirit or the name of the god um, i can make a buck out of this or human's ego unless the teacher or the guru, they have completely arrived at a silent mind or they're completely have come to the purification and they're purified. Uh, if there is any ego left in them and there's a secret agenda, then what happens is they can use their power and they can use um, whatever is at their disposal because people start trusting them and giving themselves to them. And so we can see today as also in the spiritual world that there is false proclamations or there is also abuse uh, and misuse of the power of the spiritual teacher uh, in various forms. So, what basically boils down is that what do I do, you know? How do I navigate my way through this jungle? And um, how do I find the right teacher? And how do I find the right community? And, and how do I know what's really right for me? That's uh, something that comes up. And, uh, and it's real, and we all need to look at it. And a part of that is really to do always cross-examination and cross-examining everything to see, number one is uh, to develop and to our intuitive knowing. I'm not talking about the passing emotions that come and go. That one moment I'm feeling good or one moment I don't feel good about something and, and that feeling good, feeling, feeling bad can come and go and it's not consistent. I'm talking about tuning in <laughs> and really uh, developing and paying attention to our true inner voice and our inner guidance. Because down deep, you always know what's right and what's not. Nice. And that's one of our 
fortunate uh, inheritance that we have received from the Creator, that somewhere down deep, we always know. And now, there are times in our lives that we're kind of live in denial, <laughs> excuse me, and we not really pay attention or really don't want to look at something. Uh, but you always, at the end of it, when something happens, you always, when you look back, you say, I kind of down deep, I knew this was right or this was wrong and or something was not really kosher. So that's one thing <laughs> you want to do is that always do check in with yourself. Always come back to center of yourself. Always come back to this place of really sitting with yourself and sitting with the situation, or whatever that is, and to see if it's right or not to see if you're fooling yourself and you're making up stories for yourself or, or not. Are you really looking at the evidence and the facts and what really is being presented to you as well as your intuitive knowing and slowly, slowly working on that area and and being really honest with yourself and developing your powerful intuition, which is you have already been born with and you have inherited that. And pay attention to that. The spirit, this in spirit world, your guide, your, the angels, your, soulmate or your higher self, uh, whatever name we want to put to it or however we want to address it, is always in a communication with us. We're always being communicated. There's always divine self communicating with us in different ways. Now, it could be a sign that you see, or it could be a series of different signs happen, or it could be a voice speaking to you, or it could come in a form of a premonition. Um, it could be in a voice or, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's this communication, it's always been there from childhood and it's always there. But for a lot of us, we don't pay attention to it. Now we're, you have to also be careful because this communication of between us and our divinity, and our guide or guides uh, cannot be mistaken for the ego. And I've seen that happen a lot in the spiritual world, that the ego takes the shape of the, our higher self. And the person starts to ego trip and starts to come up with stories that the ego, their ego is telling them to do, they're ego tripping, and then they're kind of labeling it that this is my higher self is telling me, or this is my truth is telling me. And you want to pay attention to that because it's very, very important because this other one could actually be very damaging and destructive. And again, really, truly, honestly, if you're really honest with yourself, you really know. You really know if this is an ego trip 
or it's really your intuitive knowing speaking to you. Okay? And you can distinguish the two if you are honest with yourself and you're willing to cross-examine yourself and the evidence of what is going on, what's happening. <coughs> Excuse me. This, um, I brought this subject up because um, obviously I had a chance to travel and in my travels, it takes me to different places. And, and when I'm traveling, I go through different areas of the society and I encounter um, different minds and different egos and different situations. And I start to see how uh, the general public, where is the psyche of the human mind and how it's really focused on the accumulation of the wealth and how little value it has for spiritual development. And it's, it's uh, interesting to see that and how, and in this traveling into these different layers of consciousness of people, then you can also see how they suffer from the fears and the concerns they have because a lot of their fears and concerns is very clearly related to the root chakra of, of human beings, of what's going to happen to me. And if I don't have enough money, um, if I don't have enough wealth, what's going to happen to me? But really, how much wealth or how much money does someone really need to live a comfortable life? You know, how many pieces of land do you need to have? How many homes, houses, or cars? Or how much money in stock market or gold and silver coins do you really need to have? You know, for someone to live comfortably. And at one point, Enough is enough. And what we really see in the world, and when I do encounter people like that, that there is this really um, feeling, this desire, this thing, this energy, this entity that is uh, hovering around them and it's taken over them. That is like, you know, they're kind of operating from the, the root chakra of this fear-based thing of more, 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 not enough, more, more land, more homes, more money, more, more, more. And, and it's like it's never enough for them. So, but you can always look and see that what is happening with these people is also sort of a reflection of also where I am, a reflection of where we're at too. That also is their greed or, um, narrow vision of how they see things, that they need more, more, more. How can I benefit from that? How can I use um, this situation that they're in, this state of consciousness that they're in? How can I um, use that to look at myself? 
do I carry that? Do I have these seeds within myself? Do they reflect a part of myself? Because also it's very easy for me to sit down and point my finger at them and, and create this separation that they're separated from who I am. And then it's them and it's me and I am more conscious and they're unconscious. Well, clearly there's unconsciousness that's happening. There's no doubt about that. You know, it's very clear. We can see it very easily in the world. But how can I turn the poison into medicine? And how can I, um, if I have an observation of unconscious mind as a part of humanity or a big part of humanity is being into this dark hole and it's really uh, crawling into this unconsciousness. And I see that. How can I use that into my benefit? What can I learn from that? And how can I avoid myself to fall into the same trap given an opportunity or a situation? So, because the ego, the human ego, um, there's one major human ego that basically runs through everybody. That, that there's parts of this one human ego that it always comes to me, 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 myself. What do I get? You know, I am better, I want more. I don't care about other people. As long as I get mine, who cares about yours? Is that part of the human ego? It also runs in us. And it may hide itself in different ways. Okay, and I may come and say, well, they're unconscious and there is no spiritual values in the world. And look at me and I do conscious work and, and da, 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 all these things. But yet I have to be very careful because this ugly monster, this ego thing can come and hide itself and cover itself up in the name or under the pretense of being conscious in myself. And somehow I would be operating from that place while I'm blaming the society or other people and then completely be uh, blinded and not pay any attention to this ugly monster. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I got a nasty cold last week. So, and it's still lingering around. Um, does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Uh, be like asking any questions or feeling like sharing. <coughs> Let's see, excuse me. <coughs> Hilda, did you wanna say something? Me? Yeah. No, not at, not at the moment. Right, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So has anyone um, 
felt or have seen and noticed this uh, fraction of our society of how e egoistic it's become or how it's focused has changed from the world of spirit and spiritual values and really has become so focused on money and wealth and wealth accumulation. Have you noticed that? Anybody? Rosalie? Yes. I can't understand that people never are grateful for what they have. They are greedy, they want more. Say that part again. I said I can't understand that people are not grateful for what they have. Everybody wants more. And if the neighbor has something new, they're not happy with him, but they want to buy something better than him. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that, well, that's basically a manifestation of the ego. That's, uh, it's a representation of how the ego works. So, but basically it comes to a false identification. All of it comes to um, this identification that what I am or what I have, the way I am is not enough. So there's something missing in me and I need to add up more to it. No, they understand there are times it's just need. And, and that part, I get it, that there is need. That of course we all have our needs, but then uh, what I'm referring to is to this part of us, this part of our psyche, our ego, that it's never enough. And more, I need more, I need more. Because what happens is this part is being reinforced the, the, by the more accumulation of whatever it is, whatever that is, accumulating more. And I'm not saying, look, there's nothing wrong. Don't take me wrong. There's nothing wrong for striving to be wealthy, to be well off, and to accomplish and to be a winner in life. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Where the problem is, is that when we lose our integrity, and we lose our focus, that we replace the spirit, we replace love, we replace God, we replace the heart center with the mind, with the world, and accumulation of wealth or possessions becomes the number one thing and it starts to consume us so that's where it becomes unhealthy and dangerous to ourselves and to other people and that's where it brings envy and it brings hate and it takes us to places that becomes very damaging that we're willing to cheat or to destroy families or lie or whatever we have to do in order to get more. Because what it does is there's this false identification by getting more, there is there's this sense of security that is gonna make me feel more secure if I get more, if, if I accumulate which it just doesn't exist because that's not where security comes. 
It's like putting our attention on the wrong place and trying to make things safe. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I can get more and more and more and more, but if I feel insecure inside myself and I feel empty within myself, that remains the same. It doesn't matter how much more I add up to what I already have. That sense of empty, emptiness, that lack doesn't disappear. Because it's not the stuff that are going to make it go away. It's the, the lack of this, the spirit is by not being focused on what is really important and not really coming back home into where it's secure, where it's safe. And that is to go beyond the mind, to go to this place that you can see the ego and you know, where you can come to a silent, quiet place within yourself. And then in arriving in this quiet, silent place within yourself is there is that immediate understanding. Immediately there's the understanding that I am complete, I am whole, and there's nothing missing. I am I'm safe and secure. That sense of security and safety is within ourselves and we can see it you can look at it into different layers of society and you can just very clearly see it in history of how throughout the history with kings and queens and different governments or regimes different corporations ec economies they have fallen into the same trap over and over again by putting their attention and their focus on the wrong sense of uh, security and ultimately trying to accumulate more and conquer more land or more wealth or whatever, which basically led them to their own destruction. And that is what is happening right now in our world. But in the same time, we're at the dawn of Aqu Aquarius and the Aquarian era. And as the facade is growing and getting bigger and bigger, and becoming more apparent. Simultaneously, there is the growth and there is the evolution of human consciousness, which is happening. And uh, we will see, I'm pretty much confident that humanity eventually will wake up and it is it's 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 at its dawn right now of what is going on so we can see like <clears throat> there's more awareness in different levels uh like there's people paying more attention in their eating habits you know they're more there's an awakening going towards less eating of chemical chemically produced food to more organic food. There is an awareness in alternative therapy, alternative healing. Um, There's an awareness worldwide towards meditation or yoga. Um, it's, you can see like it's kind of growing and growing in some way, as you can also see, on the other hand, with the governments or corporations, that the ignorance is also 
is growing. So it's it's an interest interesting time that we're in, and <clears throat> we will see what's going to happen at the end, uh, or as we're going forward. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. Anyway. Hi, Paulina. Hi, Paulina. Hi. All right, nice to see you. Nice to see you. How's so, it? are you getting better? Yeah, I'm getting better. I still have this nasty cough that's still lingering, but uh, it's clearing up slowly. Yes. So um, I was thinking about what you what you were talking about. Okay. And uh, yeah, and because uh, I see it, <clears throat> the contrast is is stronger than ever before. But so it's getting better and worse at the same time, in a way. Right. Uh. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, the contrast is becoming more apparent. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, there's this, um, you know, I mean, let's, I mean, I look at it like, just like what's going on here in the US right now, for example, with, with Trump, as the leader of the tribe and the kind of things are happening here in the united states right which is kind of looks like unheard of or you've never seen it that like a president of a, a country to be so observed observed and and acting the way he's acting right right so on one hand you see that and obviously to some point, he, I mean, obviously he's been elected and there are people supporting him. And uh, so that kind of shows the general consciousness of this region of Northern America, of the general consciousness where it is that this guy is representing it. And then, on the other hand, you can see like how much like uh, meditation have penetrated into the average household or average person speaks about meditation or, or talk about yoga, for example. I'm not saying that Doing yoga necessarily means you're spiritual, but it has, you know, almost everybody has heard of the word yoga these days. And which something wasn't known 20 years ago, or almost everybody has heard the word meditation. And maybe they even practice it in some corporations that before work day, people were doing some sort of um, meditation. So it's, it's like, as, as you have observed, it's very clear that both sides are kind of growing. That interesting, very interesting. Yeah. And also with the fact of, with the development of technology, and probably this, we couldn't do this 10 years ago so easily uh, for such a low cost or providing such a broadcast. But today, it's almost anybody who has a computer or a smartphone can do their own broadcast. So. 
So it's become very easy for us to connect with each other and with the like-minded people and to unite and, and come to this place together. So only time will tell where I'm confident that um, human consciousness will evolve and eventually uh, this awareness will get into our leaders and will leak into the corporations and uh, it will wake them up to the point of realizing of the self-destruct because that's what is happening you know it's the human race is destroying itself unless it will wake up so we'll see it will catch on in time or not excuse me how's your dance project going uh great actually yeah. I I'm 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 joining join this uh, dance uh, workshop called Gaga People at Thursdays. Right. Uh, you, when you will uh, visit Stockholm next time, I uh, would love to invite you. You can yeah. try it out. Yeah, you're on. You got it. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> Looking forward. Yeah, likewise. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I probably will be in, uh, I'm planning on returning to Scandinavia uh, end of April, beginning of uh, May. So that's probably around the time we're gonna see each other. Uh, uh, yeah, this one moment there's a question came. I do influence too much. I'm, I'm just, uh, somebody wrote to me on uh, uh, Instagram, so I'm starting to see whether it's a question or it's just a comment. I, do I influence too much when I try to help to find other people way back to the heart or do I speak individually with my spiritual guides? Everyone has a different pace. I'm so thankful. Um, okay, so somebody asked this question. Do I influence too much when I try to help to find other people, uh, helping people back to the heart? Or do I? So, um, you know, this is, for me personally, when, I was in the beginning, uh, somebody's asking me that, do I uh, influence too much when I try to help people to find their way back to the heart? So, or in, it, you know, it's such an individual thing. And it's such, <laughs> it's a thing that we really need to pay attention because for example, um, when I come across people who are their, I would say their minds very closed or I call them the mainstream people and uh, they have, uh, they're really brainwashed, let's say, or they're sleepy, they're not awake yet. And uh, there are times that there's an opening, there's an opening that I can say something, that I can see they're open to hear it and using their own language. It's kind of like the way, I, this is the way I look at it, okay? But this is only a way of explaining it. So I, I don't want you to just hold on to what I say, and then uh, tell me this is how really it is, okay? 
but it's a way of explaining it. It's like when I'm dealing with sleepy people, uh, when I'm dealing with whatever, they could be from work, could be service people, could be family, could be friends, could be general public, whatever. And I come across that, that I, I realize that I need to develop um, an attitude or, or taking a position of, I am dealing with children and not to be so judgmental or harsh or impatient with them because when you have come to the world of spirit and you have been working on yourself for a number of years like most most of you most of us especially from the academy we've been working on ourselves for years and years uh, reading spiritual books being with different teachers going to different seminars and workshops so the self-awakened mechanism is already kicked in. So we have learned the language and we also have started to develop uh, our intuitive knowing and listening to our own heart and hearing the inner voice. So then if on the, on the scales of spirituality, you it's safe to say that you have maybe you have finished <laughs> kindergarten or you have gone through elementary school and now you're maybe in high school or maybe you're in college or whatever you have expanded your consciousness so when you do come across someone sleepy it could be your mom, could be your sister, could be a relative, it could be your cousin, it doesn't matter. They Age-wise, they can be older than you are. But spiritually, they haven't advanced. Spiritually, they're like a child. And so now you're dealing with them, okay? It's natural for you to feel like you want to enlighten them. It's natural for you to try because they're dealing with their fears and a lot of their worries and concerns and you know they're really stuck into this place. And you wanna just share with them that look, trust, trust life. Um, everything's gonna be fine if you trust existence. Don't worry, just pull back. Don't be stuck so much in your head. Come back to your heart. And you, you want to relay that. You want to explain this somehow to them. And sometimes maybe they're open to it. Sometimes they're not open. But you can see like they're struggling with a lot of fears. They're really worried about the news they're getting from the TV. And they're really stuck in their head worry 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 what's gonna happen da, 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 da. is he is she gonna call me back am i going to be able to save it or am i gonna you know they're they're stuck. and you just kind of want to tell them listen pull back and come to your and and just a little bit let go for the expansion to take place Sometimes there is an opening and they're open to listen to you. But you have to understand that in this situation, you become the adult and they're the children. Spiritually, you have grown up, you're a grown up, and they're the kids. So you can expect a kid, a five, six, seven, eight year old, to all of a sudden understand things that a 40 year old person understands. So you have to switch your psyche and the way you look at it that 
now you have to realize on the spiritual scale, I am dealing with the child. So you have to talk to them accordingly. Okay? I'm not talking about that you talk to adults like a child. What I'm trying is that you recognize their spirit is, is not, it's lower and they can only understand so much. So sometimes if you really try to influence them, it backfires or it just passes by and they're not picking it up or you start annoying them and they just look at you completely differently or so you have to just relax and kind of throw in a, cu a couple of different things in there, missiles, maybe it hits somewhere and they realize it, but you, you need to feel it to see at what point you can expose them and share with them there's an opening and at what point it's too much. And I have been on both sides of really being too much and trying to enlighten other people, but all I did was frustrating myself and basically losing people or just people not wanting to talk to me because I'm bugging them or I'm too woo, you know? And I was, ultimately it's just, I realize I'm wasting my time. So what it did for me was that I realized that, okay, they don't really understand what I'm saying. They're really not evolved already for this kind of transmission. But what I can do is I can be a field of love and I can meet them in the unified field of love. I can meet them in this place of the heart because that's something they understand. They may not understand my spiritual words, terminology or be open to it, but they can really feel that there's love here. And so that's what I have realized that many, many times with people who really not evolve, that that works much, much better with them than me trying to just tell them stuff. Okay, so I hope um, this academy was uh, helpful for everybody and uh, it kind of put light on this area and help us to all of us understand where we're at in our uh, humanity these days and also uh, share with each other of, of this understanding that there's times that there's frustration for all of us, that why the world is so sleepy and, and behaving the way it's behaving and it's doing self-destructive things. And uh, when is it going to wake up? So I understand that. And it's good for us to share this with each other and to uh, realize that realize that, and also uh, know that your values, your level of consciousness and who you are in my vision and in the world of spirit is not based on how much money you have. It's not based on uh, your economic strength or whether you have tons of financial freedom or not. In, in my world and the way 
I view you, that's not going to make you better or worse. And that's not, in a world of the spirit, we look at each other. And it's not about that. It's about where we're at in our human evolution and our consciousness. And how much we have learned to be real human beings and how much we have learned to really operate from our hearts, even in the very times that it's very hard financially. You know, it's very easy that when everything is going your way and everything's falling into places to sit back and give spiritual advice. But there's no value in that but the, the actual value is in that that what about when things are not going your way and everything is falling apart and are you still a real human being are you still compassionate are you still willing to help other people are you still can stay in your center or the moment things are not really going your way you're, you're going to cheat and steal and kill and, and uh, take away from other people. And all of a sudden, you lose all of your values because you're financially going through hardship or whatever. So all of a sudden, the ego, the me, me, me is going to jump in the middle and destroys everything, you know? So where are you at with yourself? And can you demonstrate your highest uh, level of consciousness in the hardship? Can you do that and stay centered? That's the important part. Um, just wanted to share with you uh, very soon. I'm getting a platform to broadcast again from Los Angeles. Uh, and we're going to give a series of uh, talks. Uh, it's called uh, Quantum Awareness um, Talks. And uh, I will be doing the Quantum Awareness um, lectures here in Los Angeles. Uh, and I will be announcing it pretty soon. We we'll also have uh, two spots left at our retreat. Our single rooms are gone, and but we only have one double room left for two people. So that's going to be the Sedona retreat from March 7th to the 15th. So if you're interested, you still have time to register. Um, other than that, the next event uh, after the Sedona retreat is going to be a healing training program I will be offering in Los Angeles. We're going to be announcing it very soon. And uh, at the end of April, beginning of May, I will be returning to Europe. And it's going to be Norway, Sweden, uh, Poland, Germany, and uh, I believe for the first time I'll be going to France. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be broadcasting again from 10 to 11 uh, California time and 19 to 20 uh, uh, Scandinavian time. I look forward to connecting with you. My website is zaratustra.tv. And we do have an open page, which is Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. You're welcome to make your write your comments uh, on our academy page, or you're always welcome to send us an email. That's info at 5dhealing.com. Sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for joining me and many blessings to all of you from across the world. Namaste. God bless.